Hi guys, uh, welcome to the another webinar series by 99 Technology. I'm Kasim Ratnayaka. I'm working as a test automation lead uh, at 99 Technology. Today, uh, we are going to look at uh, how to start automation in your project or starting test automation in your project. So uh, this will be an introductory session to a series of webinars. So today we are going through the basic stuff. And uh, this is not a technical session. Uh, we'll be doing a technical technical session in the coming months. And uh, this would be very helpful for the individuals who are planning to start automation in their projects so or who have already started in the early stages. And uh, I'll be not covering the theory parts because theory parts are available on internet anyway. So I'll be uh, talking about the practical parts and the things that I have to go through when starting automation and those kind of things. So uh, to give me a small introduction, maybe you guys are wondering who is this guy. So uh, I'm having nine years of industry experience and I started my career as a developer. Then I moved into uh, QA and test automation uh, to be precise. And I started uh, my first automation project in 2012. and. Uh, as of now, I have worked in several companies for automation and consulted. And uh, in all those projects, I I got lucky to start automation or introduce test automation uh, to those companies. So I think I'm qualified to talk about this topic. So I have worked with many automation tools, but uh, these are my strong areas like Selenium, QTP, Telerik, and Code Dior. So uh, you could ask, this question, why automation? So uh, it's actually if you go to web or if you uh, read a book about automation, so everything starts like uh, humans make mistakes, so you need automation. So let's keep that out for a second. So why automation? Uh, in a practical way, it's hard to find bugs when the same person is testing the same scenario repeatedly for every release. So since most of the companies are moved into agile, we are doing two weeks or three weeks releases now. So if a one person is testing the same scenario over and over again, uh, maybe it will work for like three to four months. Then after that, you'll get bored and uh, you may slip some bugs because uh, trust me, you will actually uh, get used to test the happy path only because you have tested the scenario so many times, you know what happens. So you actually don't uh, really test all the, all the combinations of the scenario. So that's why we need automation actually. So, uh, and uh, another point, uh, the ROI, return on investment. Return on investment is a very popular topic, very large topic. So I'm not gonna talk about it because I'm pretty sure that you guys know about return on investment. So, if we are adding automation to your project, uh, you can get a lot of benefits uh, out of it. So the return on investment is uh, always high. And uh, a test automation suit anyways uh, increases the test coverage because uh, as an example, let's say a simple login scenario. So you can write a login scenario to uh, enter the username, enter the password and click on the login button. So that's for the happy path. But uh, if you are testing for a negative scenario, let's see uh, you want to check uh, a different username, wrong username, wrong password. So in this case, we are running the same uh, three steps, entering the username, entering the password and clicking on the login button. So we can add those uh, data to our data sheet or our data source and iterate the same test twice to get uh, cover two scenarios. So in that case, it increases test coverage. So and uh, automation always uh, reduce the execution time because if you are testing it manually, to, since you are a human, it will take some time to execute a scenario. But in automation, uh, it works very fast. Uh, most of the tools I have used, it's very fast. So the execution time is reduced. So that time can be uh, used for something uh, other than testing or to test other aspects of testing like security testing or performance testing likewise. And uh, the main part is reusability because we are creating a test suit to uh, reuse it every time. So you can reuse it, you can actually groom it uh, by time to time. So 
that's another advantage and a real reliability so automation suit is very reliable so the um, results are also uh, very reliable because uh, if you uh, you can miss some cases in your testing but in uh, automation it never happened and automation suit is very robust so uh, it's very reliable so it's uh, move on and uh, do I like to ask this question do I have to automate 100% of the application my answer is no because uh, there are scenarios that has low ROIs there are scenarios uh, that you have to uh, you can test uh, by manually very easily so you don't have to invest on automation for those scenarios so you don't have to test uh, you don't have to 100% automate your application and uh, do all projects res require test automation Again, I said no, because uh, all the projects doesn't require test automation. Let's uh, take an example like this. Uh, you are doing working on a project for like three months. It's a three months project. And after that, you are giving the project back to the client. So why wasting uh, time on automation? Because uh, it, automation is expensive. Adding automation is expensive. So for small projects or fixed bit small projects, uh, I don't recommend test automation. So let's move on to selecting scenarios. How do you select scenarios to automate? So uh, first we'll look at what to automate. So scenarios that are included in regression testing, this is very obvious. So in regression testing, we are testing the same scenarios again and again. So it's good to uh, add all the regression scenarios uh, to a test automation suit. And uh, scenarios that involve complex and time consuming actions. So, Somebody can argue like, uh, uh, why are we automating a complex scenario? Because trust me, when you actually automate a complex and uh, time consuming scenario, it will give you a, a huge ROI because uh, that will uh, execute very quickly. That may take some time to develop, but that will execute very quickly and it will give you a huge ROI uh, to your project. And uh, there are scenarios that is need to be tested within cross platforms. So nowadays uh, we are using uh, our applications are working on mobile phones, so desktops, then uh, different platforms. So let's uh, take the different platforms uh, for a side. Uh, actually, uh, let's take uh, the uh, browsers. Always our application should work on three or four browsers. So why are you testing the same scenario in different browsers and wasting time? So that's why uh, these kind of scenarios should you should automate. So uh, and you can again select scenarios that are time consuming to test manually because there can be scenarios uh, that takes a lot of time to execute because uh, there can be scenarios with huge workflows. So those uh, scenarios should be automated and uh, scenarios that use multiple data values for the same actions. Like I said previously, the login scenario. So in the same login scenario, we are using the same script for different data. So those kind of things we can automate. So what not to select to automate? So scenarios that you should not automate. Scenarios, uh, I would like to say like, you should not automate the scenarios that are only executed one time. Let's say a bug fix. So there's no point on uh, developing automation script to test it. And there are some tests uh, that should be executed very quickly. So those kind of things, uh, you don't uh, add automation because to do automation, you need automation engineer, then he needs to script the automation uh, scenario. So if a test can be actually done manually uh, very quickly, don't automate it because if you are not gonna use it again, so don't do that. And the other thing is scenarios that have low ROI. So with low ROI, uh, actually it's a waste of uh, time and resources to automate. So I'll give you an example for this. So this is actually a scenario that I came up through and I'm giving some consultation to a company. So uh, it was a huge table, so I just took a sample. Uh, this is a um, sample data table. So in this table, uh, you have uh, there were some columns uh, that you can filter out uh, using filters, and the main functionality was you can uh, change the order of the rows. So uh, 
the test is those two things so to do this manually uh, it won't take much time right it will take like uh, 5 to 10 seconds 5 seconds maximum so but to automate this uh, it's a rather a hectic job because uh, you have to find this table first then uh, verify the filters works let's take filters aside for a moment so uh, let's take the changing uh, order of the rows so uh, first you have to uh, try out like how many rows are in this table so which row i'm going to uh, move and where i'm going to place it so what happens when there are two or three rows so just one row or no rows so we have to handle everything by the automation script and when you are doing the automation script uh, before you uh, change the order you have to uh, take take one column or two columns to a list then save it then change the order then uh, save the um, sequence again then compare those two lists to check whether it's actually uh, the automation script has corrected the order so that is actually uh, takes a lot of time and effort with a lot of logic so these kind of scenarios i don't recommend to automate because uh, if you can do it under five seconds why are you wasting like a resource and like five to six hours to automate this so these these type of scenarios you can eliminate without automating because doing it manually is a lot of uh, actually faster and uh, it's not that expensive to automate so uh, let's move on to selecting a tool so uh, when selecting a tool there are uh, things you have to consider like uh, compatibility with the current tool stack is the first thing because uh, uh, as an example let's say in my project we are uh, using a dotnet stack we are using visual studio tfs and other microsoft uh, services then i'm um, uh, as the automation engineer i'm um, actually proposing a system with java and uh, selenium let's say so uh, this never works with the dotnet code then uh, you have to create to create cis you have to go for jenkins and you have to get uh, separate servers for this likewise so if i can come up with uh, selenium with c sharp this would this would uh, totally work because uh, our current tool stack is dotnet so if i'm going with selenium and dotnet it would uh, totally work and since if you are using c sharp so the application is also written in c sharp so that would actually work and the second thing is uh, the development technology of the application to be tested let's say uh, your application is developed with angular js so it has silverlight components so those when your application has those uh, technologies you have to use a specific automation tool that supports angular js or silverlight so you have to check whether your tool supports those technologies then uh, the other point is the automation tool should be well established because uh, then you have uh, a community support support from the vendor uh, likewise so as an example we had a issue with our telerik scripts uh, because uh, recently firefox had a huge uh, update with all the ui and other stuff so our uh, Firefox tests were failing uh, quite rapidly then we found out that this is the issue but then again in two days we got an update from Telerik uh, that sorted out the issue let's imagine we used a uh, normal tool uh, very uh, not, uh, we'll say uh, unpopular tool like Securely because I have used Securely for two three projects and it's really hard uh, when you don't have that uh, common technologies and common supports that you get in a normal tool so uh, and another thing is like uh, the team should have some skill resources uh, if your team is on dotnet based uh, employing a java guy to do automation he will not work he will catch up uh, but he may have a learning curve so that is a cost again uh, the reporting capabilities each and every automation tool has a reporting capability but you have to check whether this reporting capability is enough for our system because most of the time automation will be run on a separate server so 
just imagine if I am running automation on a separate server and if I have to check the results, I have to log into the server and check. So it would be a hectic task. So reporting capabilities should be available when you are selecting a tool. And the extensibility of the tool, um, let's imagine if you are using uh, Selenium or Telerik with C Sharp. So in Visual Studio, you can extend the solution with whatever you want with uh, classes, uh, object oriented uh, technologies and uh, other things. And if you have like separate uh, DLLs, you can edit. So those kind of support should be there when you're selecting a tool. And there is another uh, small thing you can do when selecting a tool. That's uh, you can do an analysis like this, a small analysis. So this will, uh, this is actually I just uh, came up with these functionalities. Actually, uh, this is not 100% true. So just to show you guys how to select a tool. So first uh, list out your functionalities, then uh, check whether your tool is supporting those things. So you can see, uh, get an idea uh, which tool supports which functionalities and which tools actually uh, uh, we can select for our uh, automation project. So do a comparison like this, it would be really helpful to choose a tool. And uh, let's say we have uh, choose a tool now. So you have to create a POC to check whether the tool actually supports your system and uh, whether to check whether that's the, the right tool. So uh, to create a POC, you have to select scenarios with, uh, I would say the most complex functionalities because uh, if the most, if that tool can uh, handle the most complex functionalities of your system, it will anyway help to uh, automate the other functions. So you don't have to worry about that. And uh, make sure when you're selecting scenarios, the third part, if you're using third party controls in the application, those are used like uh, tiny MC editors, like uh, Telerik, Kendo controls, like those things. Uh, make sure that you add scenarios that uh, uses those controls so you know it works and uh, make sure to test all the capabilities available in the automation tool as well uh, in some tools uh, they give image comparison uh, capabilities but uh, to apply to some applications when you're going to apply it you get to know that uh, the application is not supporting that so there are scenarios like that so make sure the every uh, capability that is available or marketed by the vendor is uh, tested tested against your system. And uh, another uh, good point is don't worry about the formalities. You don't have to create data sheets, uh, separate object repository. This is just a POC. You are just uh, testing the tool. So don't waste time on uh, creating uh, data sheets or object repositories likewise. And uh, it's better if you can uh, create a sketch of your framework, like uh, you're planning to uh, use a framework like this. So you should have an idea when uh, selecting a tool. So make that uh, sketch as well and uh, verify the results. Uh, sometimes it may be your tool, sometimes it may not be your tool. So uh, if it's a tool, you can start implementation right away. If it's not, uh, you can test all these uh, things for another tool and check. So let's move into implementation. So uh, first things first, uh, you have when you selected the tool, you have to finalize the framework first because let's say now you have select, uh, tested the application with your most uh, complex scenarios, now it works, and you have selected the framework or you have developed a framework, but make sure it's finalized and it's working because when you have like uh, like 300 to 400 scripts and uh, when you find out that uh, the framework should be changed you are in a serious problem so finalize the framework first then uh, you can uh, add that four to five scenarios that you currently actually used for the poc but do it right uh, do it right this way uh, with uh, object repositories uh, data sheets and likewise, then uh, you know it works. Then I would like to uh, call this the round trip. So uh, after you created the framework and four or five scenarios, uh, do the CI. Uh, 
because continuous continuous integration is uh, important as your automation tool or your automation framework so it should work else it's not automation to, uh, automated testing so uh, create a test environment because you are not going to run your tests in your computer so create a test environment schedule the test analyze the tests and uh, make sure it works so the whole uh, round trip works now your framework is finalized then uh, after that you can uh, keep on adding scripts so you have a robust solution right now then you can add uh, scripts uh, as per your wish and uh, make sure that uh, when you are creating tests uh, the tests should be uh, created in a way that they are independent from each other as an example i could say uh, let's say in your project you have to create a company you have to create a sale then you have to create a project so if you are adding those three scenarios into one test automation scenario let's imagine you you want to test the creating sale part only but to do that you have to run the whole test so that's just a total waste of time so uh, test should be created in a way that they are independent from each other this may be not uh, feasible 100% but uh, do it uh, as per uh, like every test if you can if it's uh, if it's really difficult it's okay but uh, if it's really good if you can independent your tests uh, from each other so let's move in uh, when the implementation is finished uh, you could uh, create test data and test environments uh, properly so uh, again uh, like i said before test data should be isolated from the test because uh, when you hard code your data into your test it doesn't work every time if you have to change something it's really hectic you have to change the code and all that and uh, i actually uh, i like to propose the data driven uh, technique to use uh, pretty much because it's very efficient and effective when it comes to uh, use one script and to test different outcomes because uh, if you have uh, one test if you have to test uh, a one scenario with different data data driven testing is the most easiest way and uh, make sure your data hookup points are configurable in a way that uh, you could use excel sheet or a data sheet or xml file so because in one point if you select to change your uh, data input method uh, that Uh, you will be in trouble because uh, you have uh, created your framework you have done everything and you have like written like 300 scripts now it's too late so make sure that data hookup points should be configurable and uh, test environment test environment should be uh, similar to the production environment because uh, let's say you have uh, four browsers in your production environment that uh, your clients are using make sure your tests run with all the four browsers in your test environment as well because there can be browser issues who knows so uh, and uh, make sure that uh, the environment uh, should be something other than the development environment like we like a, there is a famous saying it works in my machine so because uh, it uh, most of the time it works in your machine but when you add it to a server or another machine uh, most of the time it crashes because uh, you have missed something maybe a dll maybe it's a plugin so make sure uh, test environment is uh, similar to uh, the production environment and uh, the test assemblies also should be deployed in test environment automatically or you could do this manually but then again it your whole system will be not a automated uh, end to end automated solution so make sure that your test assembly is also deployed to the test environment automatically because uh, that's really helpful uh, when doing ci and all those stuff if your uh, tool is not supporting that actually you could uh, create a bat file or something to copy those files because those are just uh, assemblies and uh, this point test run should uh, only happen on a test environment i always i already told that so and uh, the test environment should be configured in a way that any stakeholder can access the uh, test and uh, run the test and see the test results so let's say uh, in your solution you can uh, run it in your machine and you 
you're the only person who are able to see the test results i don't think it's a good solution because uh, your automation solution will be not used uh, quite often uh, in that case because everybody even the developers the uh, product owners those people are also uh, able to run the test or actually at least to see the results when uh, when we schedule the test uh, it will be running on uh, midnight or at any given time that you have uh, scheduled them so uh, to s- at least to see the results everybody should be able to see the results at least so that is a very uh, good point to uh, keep in your mind and uh, after you create the test data and test environments uh, everything is set now your your solution is working end to end then you have to stabilize the tests because uh, this thing is really important than creating a uh, automation solution because uh, like i said before it may work on your machine but when you add it to a server or some other uh, environment it, it may fail that's because the test is not stabilized sometimes uh, in your machine uh, a browser opens under one second but uh, in a server with the other loads uh, it can make it can take like 2 to 3 seconds so in that case you have to uh, stabilize the tests if uh, the browser uh, takes time to uh, render and those kind of things uh, you have to uh, consider that uh, when stabilizing tests and uh, some tests like i said earlier some tests fast in the environment and fail in the test environment that's because of uh, browsers platforms those kind of things so you have to uh, make sure that your test works in every given uh, environment and uh, this is uh, actually the third point is very useful because i i have uh, faced this problem like uh, so many times always close the browser and reopen when you are running complex scenarios because browsers tend to keep cache so uh, if you are running a very lengthy scenario with lot of data sometimes the brow- uh, after that scenario is completed the browser slows down uh, rapidly so to uh, get rid of that always try to close the browser and reopen there is a small delay for that but uh, i think that pays off than uh, failing your next test right so other thing is do not combine two scenarios so like i said before uh, creating a company creating a sale creating a project let's say in that scenario uh, creating a project fails but in your test results the whole system has failed so you don't know actually which uh, scenario is failed unless you debug the code or check that stack trace or something like that so uh, do not combine two tests uh, try to keep it uh, independent uh, all the time and always reuse your code everywhere po- everywhere possible so uh, it would actually help the test maintenance because uh, if you are, if you have copied the same code for several scenarios uh, if something changes you have to change all the all the places that you have copied that code so it's best to uh, reuse the uh, codes everywhere possible and uh, the last point is like automation tool update should be configured to happen smoothly uh, as you know you have nuget packages uh, likewise uh, to update uh, your tests uh, test automation uh, software so when you get a automation uh, update uh, it's better if it happens in a automatical way rather than uh, taking the assemblies and copying it yourself so all that's why i said you when you're selecting a tool you have to select a established tool because in a established tool you won't get these issues those are actually taken care of by the vendors so uh, that's about it actually if we uh, recap uh, we talked about uh, selecting scenarios what are the scenarios you should automate what are the scenarios you should not automate and selecting a tool uh, how do you select a tool and that matrix uh, will be really helpful to use a tool and creating a poc don't forget the round trip it's very important uh, sorry it's in implementation in creating a poc uh, don't worry about the formalities and all so just uh, create your scenarios with most complex scenarios and in implementation uh, keep give special uh, attention to the round trip because it's very important 
and creating test data and environments, make sure those are isolated from the tests and uh, make sure the environment is similar to the production environment. And we talked about stabilizing the tests as well. So uh, that's about it. Uh, if you have any questions, please uh, send it uh, to this uh, 1990X technology forum or you could uh, actually directly mail to me. Uh, that's it then. Uh, thank you very much for joining. Uh, See you in the next webinar.